that's a wonderful opening for our wonderful newest show host on ZTV, Miss Amy Eggers. Hello and welcome, Amy. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. And I just want to thank Zebra for giving me this opportunity. I'm really very honored. Thank you. Well, we are honored to have you join our lineup. We think the world of you and think that you're, uh, well, everybody knows how talented you are. I know you've been called the Martha Stewart of Del Rey, which is, uh, which is definitely a, a highfalutin <laughs> praise, I would say. It is. I, I don't know if I can live up to it. Oh, I think <laughs> that you. I think that I, I think you have already. You're just uh, your your talents and your um, interests, you know, go uh, so so to so many different corners of, of what people like to do in terms of entertaining or floral arrangements or super fun and off the wall and misfit makers. Just one example of the creativity that you bring to all the projects that you get involved in. Thank How you. do you? Um, how do you corral all of that into into doable things? Um, I think one is I loved making lists on paper, like still a pen and paper. And um, I have basically, I just constantly am writing things down. I have a spiral bound notebook and if something interests me or if I want to try something, you know, just write it down so that you can mm -hmm. jog your memory later. Um, I also um, schedule things like an insane person. <laughs> <laughs> but for instance, like, you know, if you, if you say, okay, well, I like this, this and that thing, but it's not a priority right now. Well, okay, go ahead two weeks in your schedule and say, oh, try this today or whatever, you know, or get together with idea. friends and make a point to try it. Yeah. You know? So you just have to make time for it, I guess. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like reviewing those notes are uh, important. I seem, sometimes I, I make notes and then, I, you know, I just never see them again. Oh, I know that's why you have to get a spiral bound notebook so they don't they can't leave. <laughs> I actually have a couple that I, I use for work, but I should make one for personal for stuff that I really want to do. So yep. yeah, no, that, that very that, low that's tech. A, yeah, exactly, <laughs> but, low know. tech. That's okay. Uh, high tech is overrated, if you ask me. Um, <laughs> So, um, so this is uh, your first, your debut show, and I know that yep. we have something special um, to show everybody, and um, yes. everybody should know that there's a, a video that we're going to play. But if you have any questions at all, please go ahead and type them in the in the comment um, feature, and Amy can answer the questions. And if she doesn't answer them tonight, answer them tonight, she can um, easily get back to you. Oh, um, absolutely. And um, why don't we, before we even get into it, give people a minute to kind of get a pen and a paper to get ready to take notes on their phone. Let's Let's talk about yeah, it. I know definitely. that you have some I know that you have some workshops coming up I do so um, as part of our misfit makers craft collective um, we're hosting a series of workshops around Alexandria and one of the cool things is that a lot of these workshops are at one of two stores in Alexandria Kiskadee and Urban Redo so awesome. um, and then those shops yeah those shops are having discounts you know for students that night only and, you know, we'll have refreshments and holiday music and all of the topics are totally different. Um, I did actually uh, add a couple because we've sold out. Um, but on Sunday, the 28th, after uh, Thanksgiving, I'm teaching a live wreath workshop. And that's um, going to be actually in the parking lot of Delray Psychic Wellness. Um, and the tickets, those that ends tomorrow night, the sale of those. So if you want to do that, definitely look into it. Um, and then on Tuesday, December 1st, my friend Catherine from Misfit Makers is teaching the coolest class at Urban Redo, Fascinator Workshop. And it's, you know, making those sort of fancy hats that you see. Um, I love that. You know, that kind yeah. of sit on the side of your head. But, you know, you can basically put an entire Christmas tree on your head. And <laughs> what's cool is that you can wear them to parties and the Scottish Walk. Ah, so fantastic. You know. Well, my mother yeah. always said, if you can come up with three things to wear something to, you know, no, uh, you know, you can get anything you want. So that's fantastic. Exactly. So that's two so far. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, um, Catherine and I, again, are teaching a Kitchmas wreath workshop, meaning kitschy, vintage, retro-y at Lost Boy Cider. Um, that's on the 6th. Then on the 8th, I am teaching a live swag workshop at Kiskadi. And then lastly, on the 14th, I am teaching a diorama ornament workshop, and these are adorable. That's at Urban Redo, and that one is half sold out. So if you do want to do that one, look into that as well. 
Wow. Um, I just love how varied and fun and festive and different these are. These all are. I mean, like I said, the creativity is fantastic and you're so great to share it with people. Um, and I, the, we can put that slide up again, but really it's on your website so people can go in and find out it the is. locations and everything, right? Yeah. And actually there's um, a link on my Instagram bio at Amy Seals Eggers. Um, it's a link tree link and it's got the registration is listed for every single one of them. Fantastic. Great. And your website is amyeggers.com. They can also go register right. through your website as yep. well. Fantastic. Yep. Wonderful. Yep. Well, that's, um, uh, that's great. I'm, I'm looking forward to those. I've, I'm going to, I'm going to try to make some of those because I just love every single idea and the diorama. That is just so great. Oh, those are so cute. And you know, what's cool, Susan, about a lot of this stuff is that you can apply it to other holidays, Yeah. you know, so it's not like, it's just, you know, you can do it for Easter, Oh my God, can you imagine an Easter fascinator? I mean, you know? <laughs> or an Easter diorama. And not only that, but See? you can do it, like especially like the diorama, you can make um, really unique gifts for birthdays or, you know, Absolutely. giveaways for parties yep. and stuff for your kids' uh, birthday parties. Exactly. I mean, really, uh, you know, the options are endless. It's just really yeah, and it's fun. And you're, yeah, and you're getting a lot of love here in the comments. Um, Sarah Kinder just oh, said, Amy's thanks. workshops are so fun, which, of course, everybody, <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. everybody knows. And Barbara Wyant said, Amy rocks. So Stacy Warm, love Amy Sills Eggers. So, and of course, Lucelle and Mary <laughs> are in agreement, as am I. Hi. So um, anyway, why don't we get right into um, our, our, yeah. our, feature, our feature video, and that okay. is uh, learning how to make this awesome drink, and then also some Thanksgiving table tips. So yep. here we go with some great advice with the one and only Amy Eggers. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Hi. Um, um, I think that you're going to show us how to make this awesome drink, but first I think yep. you're going to show us um, how to prepare some of the ingredients for it. Yeah, definitely. So this is a recipe that I came up by myself, um, and it's called the Cable Knit Cider, which is, you know, an autumnal homage to a lot of these apple-based uh, cocktails that you're seeing, you know, in the fall and for Thanksgiving. So I always like to serve my guests kind of like a welcome cocktail. And I'm sure that some of my friends are watching. They're like, I never got that cocktail. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to break it down pretty simple so that you can do this yourself. The base of this cocktail is the spirit of bourbon. And since we're going to be mixing this with simple syrup and apple cider and a citrus, I chose Evan Williams. Um, it was about 16 bucks or so for this a bottle so it's pretty affordable you'll have tons left over if you want to mix it in with something else um, I did not choose a top shelf bourbon for this because it is being combined with um, other ingredients so we're gonna also make our simple syrup and for those of you who haven't done it before it's so easy and what's cool about it is that you can also use it in iced tea or to sweeten other drinks and it's a lot idea. it's already broken down so you're not going to have a clump of sugar floating at the bottom of your glass so to do simple syrup it's so easy it's one to one so if you wanted plain simple syrup you're going to take eight flowing fluid ounces of water and that are one, flowing <laughs> that are flowing <laughs> and one cup of sugar one to one boil it let it dissolve and sit now for most simple syrups you can refrigerate them for about a month after that but if you don't use it all you're going to want to pitch it but today because we're doing a fall theme i am um, making uh, allspice simple syrup so for this it's basically steeping tea um, if you will so <clears throat> what I would do is take one tablespoon of allspice berries. You can get these online anywhere. It's probably about $6 a bag. Um, and you would take about a tablespoon's worth and coarsely grind them. Now you can use a spice grinder or a food mill. Um, I like the mortar and pestle because you can also use it for guacamole or whatever else around the kitchen. But if you don't have any of these things, just go ahead and put them like in a freezer bag, a Ziploc, and pound the heck out of it with a meat tenderizer. And that does the trick too. So we're going to want to grind these as best possible. And it can be a coarse grind. It doesn't have to be fine. Ooh, you can hear them popping. You can hear them and they smell so good. That's cool. It smells like fall. <laughs> yes, it sure does. And so when you have all these grind, ground, um, grinded, grounded, <laughs> grounded, <laughs> I'm grounded. So are you, uh, yeah. it's good to be grounded. <laughs> yes, it is. And so then you're going to want to just 
combine this with one cup of water and boil it. Once it reaches a boil, take it off the heat, cover it and let it simmer for 20 minutes. Excellent. And we will have this um, recipe available. We'll yep. post it on, the, on our website. Definitely. On, on the, the Facebook page, yeah. <laughs> and this is what it's gonna look like when you're done. So basically you strain it into a mason jar because you don't want the uh, allspice grinds. Mm -hmm. Can in you the, strain it through a cheesecloth is that what you recommend? Yep, yep. Because you wanna get that t those tiny pieces out of there. It, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So strain it in here, add a cup of sugar. I know it sounds like a lot. Um, and it is <laughs> and then shake it gently until it's all dissolved and with the heat of the simple syrup It's it does that pretty quickly. So there you have it and it smells delightful and I can't wait to try it with iced tea also Oh, that's a great idea. You know, yep. So mm -hmm. Yum Yay! So <clears throat> another ingredient that we're gonna use is freshly squeezed lemon juice so I love squeezing citrus when and if at all possible obviously you have the bottled stuff not the best option, but in a pinch, it definitely works. Mm -hmm. And how many lemons about is, uh, is that jar? Um, this is about three large okay. lemons. Okay. And then we're just going to use good old apple cider, mm. any brand. Yep. It's all about fall and yep. autumn with that apple cider. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we're going to use a really cool method or sort of, it's almost like a math formula for our cocktails. And this is how you can build a lot of different cocktails. Please note though, I am not a professional mixologist. I love cocktails. I've been around a lot of people who are professional mixologists for many, many years. And now you're playing one on TV. And, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I'm sure that professional mixologists out there, are, that's not the way you do it. But my feeling is if it works for you, why not? And if you like it, then that's what you want. Absolutely. So, you know, okay. So this is a two ounce shot glass mm -hmm. and called a jigger, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Mm -hmm. And something interesting about the um, etymology of cocktails is that the word cocktail is actually a French um, derivation. And it uh, literally translates to egg cup because a man in Bordeaux, France, in the, I believe the 1800s, was started to make bitters. And he would serve them in little egg cups that you see for like poached or, or not poached, hard boiled eggs. And um, so it's very curious if that maybe might have been the first iteration of a shot glass too. Interesting, yeah. So um, we are also going to be using a coupe glass. Mm -hmm. and then what, also, what's, what do you call that? A coupe glass. C-O-U-P? C-O-U-P-E. Oh, yes. okay. And so um, did you know that the reason why some glasses have stems is to keep the drink cold? Yes, so you hold it with your... Yeah, and, it, your, and mm -hmm. it removes the drink itself away from the surface uh -huh. of, of your table. Um, I'm also uh -huh. going to serve you the same drink on the rocks in a highball glass, okay? Just to see how you like it. We're going to do it straight up in the coupe on the rocks in the highball. Excellent. To see what you prefer. Um, then a lot of times, too, uh, we're going to um, we're gonna shake this drink. Uh, this is not a stirring drink. The stirring drinks are like the really... Uh, straight up hardcore drinks mm -hmm. like a Manhattan, right. you know, martinis, things like that. So for this drink, we're going to shake it in a shaker. Okay. And why do you shake it just so that um, all that sugar gets uh, incorporated a little bit more and uh, yeah. blends a little bit better? Exactly. So this is a pretty sweet drink. Okay. And um, when you shake it in a shaker full of ice, it's going to dilute it a little bit obviously chill it as well. But the one thing that you want to make sure you do is that when you pour it into your glasses, strain the drink onto new ice cubes. Don't use the ice cubes that were in the shaker because they're already banged around and they've lost some of their you know, their uh, structure, basically. Their cubiness, yes. Their, cubi uh -huh. <laughs> their cubeness, yes. That's a great tip. Yeah. yeah. So um, the f formula or method that we're going to do is so simple. It's just remember one, two, three, four, okay? It's one of sour, today's sour is lemon, two of sweet, and today's sweet is our allspice simple syrup, three of strong, Evan Williams mm -hmm. is strong, and that's our strong, and four of weak, which is our apple cider. Okay. Okay. So those are the ratios that we're going to work That's with today. That's a great tip to remember. One, two, yeah. three, four. Yep. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. can build this around anything. So for instance, if you don't like lemon, you want to use lime, 
grapefruit, anything of this nature, you mm -hmm. know. Sweet can be a basic simple syrup or it can be a sweeter liqueur. So you can really play around with these mm -hmm. things and just figure out what you like. Even a variation of this cocktail recipe that we're gonna post for you too. Excellent. Yeah, so let's get started. So I love my vintage bullet uh, ice bucket. That thing is fantastic. <laughs> Thank I just you. love it. It is, it is cool, but the only thing is you have to use the stand, otherwise it's a disaster. Oh, So because um, it's pointed at the bottom. Yeah. That's all right, the stand is what makes it. Yep. So basically, once you get your um, shaker full, you're gonna wanna add the ingredients. And from what I've um, learned in making this drink, if you use an ounce and a half or a two ounce jigger, it's going to give you about two and a half cocktails for okay. an average pour. So. Okay. Okay. And you filled that up all the way, right? Or Not about all the way. I would say about two thirds. Okay. Yeah. Because your liquid is going to take up some volume and space okay. too. So here we go. One of sour. Helps to do it over the sink. Yeah, it does help. Helps with the cleanup later. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, two of sweet. So we're gonna do two of those of my simple syrup. Excellent, and that was a one, two, three, four, yeah. sour, you smell sweet, it? strong, and weak. I do. Oh so, my God, that smells so good. Yeah. It smells so fresh. Excellent. You know, it doesn't, doesn't taste like something you bought in a store. No, no, it, no. It really tastes mm -mm. fresh, it smells fresh. And while it's sweet, it's not, fake sweet or sickening sweet absolutely you know and i would not unfortunately recommend using allspice or ground allspice that's not going to work so you know you're going to have to get the berries if you want but like i said they're super easy because to the ground by. allspice is already a little bit too mild it's lost that pungency exactly. of the nut being the berry fresh. being fresh right, right. exactly mm -hmm. same premise as lemon right. squeezing stuff like that right. all right so here we go with our strong three of these guys and um, another time I wanna talk about batch recipes, basically making um, cocktails or drinks for a large crowd or for a party. You know, when you've got four guests waiting for their drinks, you don't wanna be that person that's taking 30 minutes for each one of them. Right. Um, I've hosted a lot of parties in my time, sometimes for up to 100 people at once, and um, you've gotta streamline that stuff. You bet, <laughs> yep. So here we are, the last part, four of week. And I don't want anybody to be intimidated about making drinks because it does seem a little highfalutin sometimes when you go to these bars and the drinks are outstanding, but it certainly doesn't mean that you can't experiment at home because there's, you know, if you like it, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. And do you recommend, um, you know, Eyeballing it or really on something like this, the chemistry mm -hmm. kind of matters and you want to you yeah. really make sure you have the, the, the proportions correct. Right. I think for when you start off, you should make sure that your portions are correct. But as you uh, tweak the design or the recipe, for instance, maybe you say, mm, I like that, but maybe less simple syrup or maybe more lemon juice. You know, right. it's just according to your yep. palate. Good idea. And then typically when you use a cocktail shaker, you're going to want to shake it until it becomes almost too cold to hold or a thin frost forms on the okay. outside. Another great tip. <laughs> I'm so happy you're sharing all these wonderful tips. Yes. They're like the housewife tips of cocktails, you know? <laughs> I know, I have some... Halloween's got nothing on you. <laughs> <laughs> I have some professional, uh, you know, bartending and um, chef friends. And they're probably like, what are you doing? <laughs> but this works for me and I yep, think it would for absolutely, you too. Absolutely, absolutely. So the first um, serving we're gonna do, Susan, is in our coupe glasses. And I'm just gonna strain this through the cocktail shaker. And then we can talk about, um, it looks pretty light in color. We can talk about garnishes if you'd like. Yes. Um, so here I mandolin an apple earlier today. Ooh, and, and you, you just can pop just, it right on top yeah. like that. And it's fragrant, you know, you can still eat it <laughs> yes. if you want. And the star just really adds a nice little yeah. a nice little art deco thing to it. And it's super easy. Or you can um, use a lemon peel. And I prefer that, actually. It's not as decorative, 
but it adds a lot of flavor. And this is why, because believe it or not, the lemon peel is essentially like skin, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, when you express the lemon, even the peel itself, it still releases a ton of flavor, kind of like when you express rosemary or mint right. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So for mine, you can do a couple things with the lemon that are easy. Again, these are not complicated. These aren't something that you no, see that look like origami. No, just using your vegetable peeler that oh, everybody yeah. has in their kitchen. Mm -hmm. So the first garnish that you can do is called a rugged swath. Oh, I like it. <laughs> but basically, it's literally just a piece of lemon that mm -hmm. comes out however you'd like it. Uh huh. It almost looks like a fruit, like a fruit leather. Yeah, exactly. And then just kind of gently squeeze it. And then, you know, it kind of takes on a shape of its own and just plop it in. Perfect. Again, not fancy, you can see, but it you can adds see the, the color. oils adding to the, to the yeah. flavor in the drink already. Mm -hmm. um, then another kind of uh, lemon garnish that you can do, again, just with the peeler. One thing to always, always, always remember is to wash your lemons. Even if you're thinking, I'm not going to use the peel, these things go through God knows what and who knows what's crawling all over them. That's a great tip and something that I don't always do, so yeah. thank you for the reminder. Yeah. Okay, so again, you have a rugged swath, mm -hmm. and then if you have, um, this is just one of those metal reusable straws, mm -hmm. or if you have chopstick, whatever, and then just kind of roll it on here, mm -hmm. and let it sort of, you know, you can do it tightly. It's almost like a curling iron. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. And then just slide it off, and then you have a cute little... Oh, fantastic, yeah. and it holds a shape. Yeah, and you can, sometimes if you want, you can prop it up, you know, on the edge or whatever. Again, it's super yes. simple, but it really adds... It does add um, something, absolutely. Yeah. And you could even, if you wanted to, is combine mm -hmm. the apple and the lemon, you oh, know, for sure. and garnish in a glass. You can really do whatever you want, the beauty of making these at home. Yeah, definitely. So do you want to try them? I sure do. Okay. All right. Okay. So cheers. Here we go. Cheers to you. Yes, ma'am. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh. Oh, that is good. Yeah. That is a really complex flavor. Thank and you. And that is from the ground clothes. I mean, yep. allspice for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's not too strong where, you know, you can have a few. And then um, I'll serve some to you uh, also on the rock so you can see what you like better. I prefer mine. Um, neat, but, uh, you know, I think that the flavors just kind of stay a little more intact, you know, exactly as the right. ice isn't it melting. Doesn't get, it doesn't get diluted. Right, right. But this is a really nice combination of the sweet, but the lemon adds that Thank you. Tart. Oh yep. my gosh, it's Thank really you. delicious. And Thanks. you just made this up? I did, but I will say, you know, with that formula that I learned from those experts, one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, and four of weak. Mm -hmm. And again, you can add so many different things to this, even, you know, if you wanted to do uh, lavender simple syrup, rosemary simple syrup, mm -hmm. and oh, those rosemary things. rosemary would be fantastic with this. Exactly, especially uh -huh. with the lemon and apple. Right. So um, it would also add sort of a savory slant to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know, before mm -hmm. you serve Thanksgiving dinner. Right, yeah. exactly. So w something that I thought was super cool about um, cocktails when I was researching sort of, uh, you know, how they came to be aside from the name, um, is that basically, you know, during Prohibition, which was 1920 to 1933, um, a lot of the uh, spirits that were easier to uh, acquire or make, such as like bathtub gin, they were wretched. They were absolutely <laughs> horrible. Yeah, you know, like, like gut rot. Right? Yeah, like oh for burn sure. Going down. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah, whole thing. The yeah. Whole thing. Uh -huh. And so um, that's sort of where uh, you know they really started mixing in bitters and sweeter things, so that and it was kind of a twofold reason which I thought was super cool is that one it was more palatable but two it was easier to down in one single uh you know drink if your speakeasy got raided uh, or you had to uh, 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 <laughs> quickly uh you know get away uh -huh. and so you know I mean who would want to do that with like disgusting yeah, right right <laughs> So um, it's just so funny to me how things come to be, you know, like it for absolutely is. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and it's so funny. I th find it so interesting and fascinating, really, that kind of history. Yeah. Where we're like, you know, pe we all take it for granted. Exactly. You know? I mean, like, who knows where this came from, right? Cheers. Yes, exactly. Cheers. Like, you know, clinking glasses right, right. together. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. You know, which is such a lovely thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh, that's good. Mm, this is delicious. Yes. And Thank it you. actually is good on ice. Um, yeah. Sometimes, I mean, I don't mind, and I know this is 
well, for whatever reason, but, you know, in the beginning of the night, it's nice to have something up and kind of fancy. Yeah. And then the rest of the night, it is kind of nice, you know, and it kind of does dilute it a exactly. little bit. Yep. Um, so you don't want to, you know, be drinking the, exactly. like, the high test all night long. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but around the holidays, it's easy to do. Absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, that's another cool thing about so many of these drinks is that you can make them without alcohol. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make them mocktails. Yep. You know, if someone's not drinking or kids whatever you know mm -hmm. or if you just want to take a break you know right um a lot of these do work and it's again it's just experimentation absolutely absolutely regarding mocktails yeah. um we actually just did a, a ztv show with uh, martha crucci and the we should talk about that yeah yeah yes. girls, the two yep. jesses and yeah. it was fascinating and so um eye-opening because the cocktails the mocktails mm -hmm. that he made were delicious yep. i mean as good if not better than some of the alcohol ones exactly it just goes to show you that it's really not the alcohol that makes it uh taste good no no you know? certainly not mm -hmm. you know i mean it's you know it's tradition you know to have the drinks and the cocktails and i love vintage cocktail culture i always have and mm -hmm. collecting the barware and things like that but um yeah i mean it's really about the taste you yeah know? it is i mean it is fun to have alcohol. Yes, right, exactly. It does <laughs> yeah. add a festive flair exactly. to a party. But if you really are going um, for taste, right. I mean, and by the same token, you know, you can have a vodka soda with lemon in it. Somebody I know really likes that. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, it's kind of boring. You know, and True. so yeah, it, exactly. it, it definitely is more fun with a little bit of a lemon, a little yep. of this allspice. Is this yeah. hint of allspice is just, I wish that you all could taste it right now because it's so delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's really, really good. Cool. Well, yeah. um, you know what? We should maybe talk about other parts of Thanksgiving um, as we're approaching this. And uh, no matter what type of dinner you're having, whether it's formal, casual, a Friendsgiving, or just your immediate family, there are certain things that you can do to make it feel special. Good. Well, I want to hear more, and I have a feeling we're going to move into the other room to hear a little bit more about <laughs> okay. it. We are going to talk about table settings, right? right? Because, right. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, does it matter? But it really makes the table look really sharp. Absolutely, right? So there's so many different levels, and we're not talking about Downton Abbey here. You right. know, I'm not going right. to get the ruler out. <laughs> um, but there's you have your basic table setting, a casual table setting, and then a formal table setting. And I think it also depends on the space you have, like the real estate you have on your table itself, mm -hmm. how many dishes you're serving, and, <clears throat> you know, what it is that you want the table to look like. So, and also it depends, too, if you're serving your food from the table or a buffet. Right, right. So, so, so many different... Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, amend this information as yes. best fits your scenario. <laughs> so, here we have... Um, some super cute vintage plates that were my husband's grandparents. It's Modern Profile by Lennox from the Me. early 70s. Ooh, Lennox, very nice. <laughs> and um, we're going to do the basic first, okay? okay? So here we just have our cloth napkin. And I am actually a huge fan these days of the napkin under the plate right here like this. Mm -hmm. But, you know... It's kind of draping over the table a little bit. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you can just do the... Um, the good old napkin, napkin ring. The napkin ring. That was a big 60s or 70s thing, wasn't it? Totally. Yeah. And, um, and I think even into the 80s with pastel colored napkins. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. The mauve. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> so one really good rule of thumb, and a lot of people know this, but maybe not. It's a good refresher, is when you make your hands like this, the B is for your bread and the D is for your drink. So the bread plate's over here and the drinks are over here. So you're going to want to put your water glass and then a wine glass after that. And then for the basic setting, you're gonna to wanna to have your entree fork on the left, your entree knife to the right, and always have the blade facing in to the plate itself, and then your spoon to the right of the knife. And that's very basic, that's your mm -hmm. basic setting. So now you can up it a little bit and go to casual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and with casual, if you're having a salad, you can put the salad bowl on top of the plate. And then you add your salad fork, the smaller fork, to the left of the entree fork. And then if you're also having bread, you can put your bread plate here to the left or right above the fork. Where the bee was. There's the bee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, and then the drinks stay the same. Sometimes you'll see it where they add red and white, 
wine glasses, um, depending, or even a champagne flute, mm -hmm. and then just remove whatever the guest is right. not having. Exactly. And one good way to remember this, I remember from growing up, and, mm -hmm. uh, is that you just begin eating from the outside in. Correct. So you just get your, you know, your salad fork first and then your, yep. your dinner fork. Exactly. And now for the formal... So you, again, pretty much leave all of these things as is, but you add more silverware, and then you can add on a coffee uh, saucer and plate or cup, which is, you know, it kind of goes in the order that you'd be drinking, like start with water, then wine, then coffee. Okay. You still have this, and then you add a dessert spoon over top of the plate like this, and then you can add a meat fork with a serrated edge. Mm hmm next to your entree fork. Sometimes the entree fork, I've seen where it's called a fish, I'm sorry, a fish knife. Uh-huh. I don't have fish knives. And again, knives. The blade faces the plate because they rhyme blade plate. Blade faces the plate. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, then you can add a soup spoon as well, and that would be, I guess, the third in. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I mean, there's, you know, very, uh, very much more formal, like the European or Parisian settings. But for the size of our tables here in, you know, in our country and the types of um, dinners that people have, you know, just uh, on their own, I yep. think that this is... That looks very pretty. And it, and it really, um, especially when there's, you know, three and four down the side right. of the table, it just looks so nice. Yeah, it really does. Mm -hmm. And it makes you feel better about it, you know. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm always, this is always so me. You always have all these aspirations, and then for whatever reason, you're running late for your party. Every time. And none of it gets done. Uh, yeah, every time. You know? Every time. So yeah. I actually started, um, when we do have people over for, you know, nice occasions, and I want it to look really nice like this, I back time. Mm -hmm. You know? So if I say, people are getting here at 6, what time should the table be set, mm -hmm. you know, prior to everybody getting there? And the only thing is, is that if you do set the table before the meal sometimes it can take that real estate away from appetizers and things like that so you just have to Wait figure out, out yeah you know tailor it to your situation right, right. well that looks fantastic yay oh Good. one more thing i'm sorry okay. one more really uh easy thing too you can always do if you're serving a lot of people you can always do the napkin roll that we've all seen you know at restaurants mm -hmm. you know where you just roll fork spoons knives into the um into a napkin, and mm -hmm. that's really great if you're serving a lot of people where it's just kind of like a grab-and-go thing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but one other trick that I really like is essentially where you make, where you create like a little pocket, mm -hmm. and you can, um, it's just a simple fold, and, and again, I'll just detail all of this later, but it's a simple fold like this, and then you just slide your cutlery down like this and so if the table is really really packed and you're worried about things getting knocked off or whatever this is a great way to sort of contain everything and you can just put it on top of the plate like that oh, I think I might have to be so doing that for my table this <laughs> yeah day. that's a great tip I forgot all about that yeah and, it's still, and it looks just as nice it's yeah, yeah exactly uh -huh. and it totally works don't do you remember the days when you would go to restaurants and they would have these napkins folded into these like origami uh -huh. shapes yeah i was gonna say like napkin gami exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh -huh. yeah the bishop's hat the swan right, you know right, all right. these things uh -huh. things have obviously been a little simplified uh -huh. but um but i think it's still important to use cloth napkins when you can you know and plus they're sustainable right you know and it makes things look a little uh like you put some effort into it absolutely and it just adds a little bit more of a fanciness to it yep. without going too over the top right so, exactly yeah it does feel nicer so awesome thanks okay well, that was a lot of information with really just wonderful, <laughs> wonderful tips. Um, I have to say the drink was really, really, really tasty. Um, and so you. easy and so, it. yeah, and so, and so easy to make. Um, I am, um, I do have the, um, Oh, I don't have the the picture right here, but we're gonna. I'll put it on the website, and I posted it today on the okay. Facebook page on the Zebra Facebook page. Um, of course, I don't have it loaded up to put on here, but um, but those other tips about table settings, you kind of do forget about that, and it's just you know kind of common sense. And there's a real, I don't know what what is it comfort in seeing that the table set up like that. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it reminds you of you know maybe of holiday dinners you really enjoyed as a kid or something like that. I mean. I can remember shopping at Pier 1 when it was still open, and I was on the phone with my cousin at the time, and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to buy napkins and, and napkin rings 
so it makes it look like grown-ups live here. (laughs) (laughs) I know. And now we're all grown-ups and we were like, why did we want to get here again? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Um, well, that was really, really great. Um, you know, thank you so much. Was there any anything else, other tips and tricks that you wanted to? Yeah, actually, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I would love to share this trick with everybody. And if you know it already, I would love to hear what else you do with it. So basically, you know, if you if you do have a floral arrangement that you're going to put on the table or a buffet, and you don't want to use that green floral foam, which is really, really not a great product environmentally speaking because it doesn't disintegrate it just kind of whatever so mm-hmm. what i want you to do if you can um you can get a mason jar okay and then you know the rings that uh come with the lids and stuff so um and then you know the bags the mesh bags that you get with your citrus mm-hmm. you know that limes lemons whatever and so you cut a little piece of that out and then you can put it over your, uh, see here? Yes. You can put it over the jar, right? You just stretch it over and cut it. When you cut it, just cut it a little bit um, larger than the actual right. jar. So you have so some it catches hangover. So it catches under the screw part, right? Right. Yeah. And then you just That's... put the, the thing, the collar, ring, whatever back on and then you might have to trim a little bit but it's Mm -hmm. nothing crazy right so what's so cool though is that now you have this grid work that you can put your flowers into and they won't flop all over the place that is brilliant and so simple and and so smart yeah it's so simple and it's free basically and (laughs) um and it makes it look a lot more designed you know rather than just throwing a Yep. A bouquet yep. from Trader Joe's into it. Absolutely. Because so, everybody you know. needs a little support, even our little flowers. <laughs> right. So, and <laughs> you can probably use it. I mean, like, depending on the size of the stems of your flowers, you can probably use it a couple times. You mm-hmm. know, just be gentle. So, right. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yay. That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, and one more. One Good. more. If you're going to do a, an arrangement for your table, make sure so that you don't block people's line of vision when they're speaking with others across the table. The rule of thumb is if you put your elbow on the table, which you should never do, but if you put your elbow on the table, the arrangement or centerpiece, whatever it is, should not exceed the height of your wrist. How smart. Yeah, that yeah. totally makes sense. Yeah, because your yeah. wrist is right. So it's right below everybody's, right. everybody's, yeah. <gasps> Thank yes. you, Amy. That's so, so yeah. helpful. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little stuff that I know because half unless the time you're like this. So what'd you say? What I know, you but unless everything? you have family over that you don't want to see your talk yeah, to. Yeah, right. Then, like... <laughs> <laughs> then go to town. Get a little get right. a little rosemary tree up there. It smells exactly. good too. <laughs> well, that's really that's really fantastic. Thank you for your generous tips and your knowledge and the drink. I think there's going to be a lot of people making the the cable knit cider so. for their <laughs> I for their so. um for their thanksgiving dinner i think that we might have that uh you know and it's still time to go out and get everything for it tomorrow it is. so thank you so yep. much amy and um thank i hope you that you me. and your family have a very happy thanksgiving and happy thanksgiving to everybody out there i do want to give you amy's um yes. Uh, keep in touch information. You can find Amy um, everywhere on social media, but uh, at Amy Sills Eggers on Instagram mm-hmm. and and Facebook, and it's AmyEggers.com is uh, the yep. the website. Yeah. And one and, more, um, uh, just one more plug for your holiday workshop calendar. Thank those you. Those are those are coming up, and um, hopefully somebody can get into. Any one of these looks amazing. The Fascinator Workshop, though, you have to you have to post pictures I know. A, 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 after that I because know. I, I've got to see those. <laughs> yes, yeah. My friend Catherine is a maestro at those. So anybody going to that thing, I guarantee you, it's going to be a hoot. So definitely yeah. do that. Yep, that's great. Well, listen, Amy, thank you again so much, and we will see you. Um, we are not going to be in uh, December. We're going to uh, kind of take take December off, but you'll be back in January. With a new show yes, ma'am. for the Amy yep. Eggers show. Okay, well, thank you so much, Amy. And to everybody out there, thank have you. a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Uh, may we all uh, 
experience, lots of gratitude for everything that we have and appreciation for the little things as well as the big things in life because so often it's the little you things that are the big things, right? So, and I Thank hope you, that Kurt everybody yes. enjoys, <laughs> right, exactly. And uh, anyway, until Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving and afterward, remember as much as you can to please be the good news in someone's life.